Hello and welcome back to the Nast Metal Production Channel here at YouTube. Welcome to another album of the week. This, of course, is episode number 28. Since, of course, the last two album of the week episodes were pretty much tributes, the last one definitely being almost slightly uh, melancholic. This one, we're back to at least uh, doing just straight up album of the week picks here. No more uh, tributes, hopefully. It, it always sucks uh, to kind of do one on def to uh, pay tribute to at least an, uh, to an artist or whatever, to a singer, a musician, or whatever. This time, who knows, we might end up uh, uh, just paying tribute to the fact that this band here uh, is, of course, um, is well split up already. They've been uh, for what? Um, several, quite a decade now. Uh, since 1988, basically, since this album's release. This, of course, is Agony, with, of course, their only full-length album titled The First Defiance, which, of course, was released through Combat Records here in the U.S., but over in Europe, it was released through Under One Flag, which, of course, was a, a spin-off label of, of course, Music for Nations. Uh, of course, Agony were uh, based out of Sweden, uh, formed back in 1984. Originally, it was started out playing uh, hardcore punk uh, uh, music. Basically, they were playing. They were more like a hardcore punk band when they first started out, and uh, their name was it was Agony, but instead of a Y, it was with an I for a while there. But by the time of 1987 or 86, I guess they decided to shift the uh, genres and went into a more thrash oriented. But Instead of going for more of a crossover thrash sound, like bands like D.O.R.I., Suicidal Tendencies, uh, uh, Stormtroopers of Death, or M.O.D., they actually went for just a straight-up serious sort of per slightly progressive thrash sound. Very uh, more um, similar to the Bay Area thrash bands, of course. Uh, Testament... Uh, which you definitely were going to hear Testament uh, definitely on the first Defiance record. Uh, you're also going to end up hearing a bit of uh, also the band Defiance here and there. Violence, uh, Death Angel, uh, Exodus. But you're also, of course, you're going to hear the first three Metallica albums for sure. Definitely being Kill Em All, Ride the Lightning, and Master of Puppets are definitely one of the main influences. However... They're not a complete carbon copy of every single Bay Area thrash uh, band or so. Instead, they do add almost a little bit of a uniqueness to the album. There is, like again, there is that slightly progressive feel to it that's probably even more proggy than almost most of the other thrash bands at, that came out of the Bay Area. No, though, very not, si not similar at all to uh, Blind Illusion. Very different from that. Almost at times, kind of slightly, maybe pushing more towards Voivod from Canada, but uh, not completely that. The only thing that gives me that sort of Voivodish is actually off the track. I think it's a Shadow of Fear, I think, uh, is the track, which kind of just has some odd uh, drum patterns in one of the song, in one of the parts of the song. It's some. Almost off key, but I think it's almost uh, on purpose. It's just so very is, which is something you're ne and never gonna hear Lars Ulrich ever pull off. So uh, uh, right there, kind of making them even slightly more technical than probably the most of the uh, uh, Bay Area thrash bands. But still, though, not being, it still almost has a sloppy sort of raw feel to it. But that just adds more to the charm of the album, uh, and. It's definitely, again, it's got that raw feel, um, but 
I definitely, I, I, and it's the only album they ever released, and it really uh, surprises me. This is actually a solid thrash metal album. Uh, there really isn't anything bad on this record, to be quite honest. Um, even when, uh, when when you think the album is going to get boring, it then picks right back up. Uh, even within a song, you might think it might end up getting boring, but it just ends up uh, going back to where it's like it's really sure you're gonna hear a little bit of their hardcore punk influence in there, but it's no different than maybe what you'd hear um, from a, let's say Voivod or their some of their sort of punk influence that they had used in their albums or Corner or even like. Uh, Celtic Frost or even uh, Sodom, some of your German bands. It more comes off of that, even though it's not Teutonic sounding, but just more comes off like that than like your normal crossover thrash fodder. So it's really definitely a, overall a unique album here. Um, some of my favorites off this track definitely being Storm of the Apocalypse, uh, the title track, Execution of Mankind, which is probably the closest they really got to really early Metallica. Which at times very sounds like something that could have easily been off of either uh, uh, Kill 'Em All or even um, maybe the first Exodus record, Bonded by Blood. If you ask me, I kind of like the sound more so than uh, uh, Pleasures of the Flesh, which was the follow up to that album. But I, I, even I also like this even more so than the New Order from Testament. If you, and to me, this is much more of a follow-up to even the legacy. And I like this, of course, even way more than um, Master of Puppets. And I like it way more than And Justice for All. This sound, though, probably should have been the follow-up to Master of Puppets and And Justice for All. Literally, the EP that at Metallica released with, um, of course, for debut, Jason Newstead, uh, the Garage Days Revisited EP... That would that that's a freaking good EP. Even though it's all covers, it and the production they all they pretty much yes. I'm going on a rant here. Uh, they say was underproduced, but fucking Jason Newstead, you could hear him on that EP. The full length album that followed that that uh, was consisted of nothing but original written material. Pales, it just pales after that EP. For one, you got some. Uh, you you can't hear Jason Newstead on that album. And for one, even some of the songs are pretty fucking long. And that album is a bit too long for its own sake. Uh, and it, it's just a complete sloppy mess. The EP at least had some control, and there was at least something on there. But the album itself that followed it, no. That's why I think the first defiance actually kind of excels on most points. This should have been the follow-up to Master of Puppets. It's very much kind of a, a gives you an idea of what could have come after that that EP. But instead, what we got that, and then they went and did the Black Album, which, which it, it, say what you will, some of it is not bad. But when it comes to to their more thrash metal oriented stuff, the best Metallica ever did was Kill 'Em All, Ride the Lightning, and that's about it. And the EP. Here, uh, Agni's the first to find should have been that follow-up. So there, rant over. Still, this is definitely a solid album. There really isn't anything bad on the sound. It's got buzzsaw riffs. It's got that sort of raw charm. And even for a Swedish band, it kind of definitely is pretty uh, damn decent, actually. Pretty good. I, I, I'm just like all over the sound. When I first bought this record uh, back... Was it 2012, 13, somewhere around there? I liked the record, but for some reason, something always kept me back from liking it because of usually, I guess, for how odd for some of the time changes there is on the album, how interesting it was or different. It's like I didn't know whether I really liked it or I just wasn't the kind of mind frame that I am in Al. But revisiting this record again. And I, and I talked about this record. I once featured it in a uh, currently listening to video. But man, this album, I think, just gets better either over time or I'm just the one who just uh, mature, ends up getting more mature for this record. I don't know. But for some reason, I appreciate it more now than I actually did back then. This is definitely a good record. Um, the fact, sure, the album is not really expensive. You can definitely can find this out for what, uh, either 10 bucks or 4 bucks on either Discogs or Amazon. 
or actually on Amazon, the cheapest would be 23 which I bought uh, this copy off of Amazon. But I can't remember. I think it was either around 10 or 11 It wasn't very that, that expensive. But definitely um, not a real uh, hard record to find. You could definitely could find it very easily. But for some reason, though, the album has never been reissued not er, since... 1988 was like the lab when this record was released was the last time this record was ever released even when it comes to CD it was and the finest CD copy on Amazon you may have to pay 106 bucks for a CD copy of the first defiance it's crazy but uh, so in a way I would almost say that it'd be nice maybe see a record company that actually remaster this record um, I think the companies that got in mind are either uh, Dive Bombs, that's pretty much one of those sounds that'd be up their alley, um, and of course, maybe High Roller. But still, this is definitely a solid record. If anyone has never checked out Aggies, The First Defiance, I'd definitely uh, recommend this one, especially for those who are hardcore thrash metal fans. If you've never checked it out, it's definitely worth a listen. But, but for those that have, and it never quite hit them, I definitely would probably would recommend to probably recheck it out just to see if it still um, is even, um, if it grows on them. Because it definitely grew on me a lot quite just recently. It just grew on me. I just wanted to give it another listen again. And fuck, it just hit the spot. Definitely a solid thrash metal album. So with that, uh, so with that, if you um, hope you enjoyed this episode, um, hope I turned you on to or have you go and revisit uh, an album. So with that, until then, this is Every Thrasher Sam out. And I'll see you later. Take care.